Today, we arrive on the Isle of Vilbrand to explore the next beast tribe on our list. A tribe of mole-like creatures with burning red, coal-like eyes and quite the severe dental problem. The beast tribe with the greatest draw me like one of your French girls idol poses. Today, we'll be looking at the kobolds. <laughs> The Kobolds. They claim the territory on the northern parts of the Isle of Vilbrand, around the Ogomoro Mountain, a picturesque location near the beautiful Iron Lake, a site with brilliant rainbow-coloured hues that permeate the ground and waters. Toxic Sludge. Yep, lots of toxic sludge from their mining and smelting. Plus, there's even the lovely lung-destroying sulfur vapor from the lake. Yay, it's a, a bit of a mess, but it's still better than Limsa Luminza. Luckily for the kobolds, they live predominantly underground, but there is still so much we don't know about them. So our questions. What are their physical characteristics, their symbol and their god? What's their society and culture like? And finally, what are their naming conventions? Let's begin. Physical Characteristics The Kobolds are a squat people and, physically, are quite weak. Their bodies are covered in short, oft quite matty fur, and they have the teeth of a British person. And just like the British, they live in dark, overcrowded and gloomy environments. But unlike the British who live in your house and have claimed it as their own, the Gobolds want to be left alone and live predominantly underground, and due to this their eyesight has degraded to be among the worst of all the races. However, where one sense gets weaker, another gets stronger. The Gobolds have an incredible sense of hearing, and they have developed long precious sensitive hairs on their faces, which can detect the tiniest change in air pressure that allows them to sense movement around them, kinda like a cat's whiskers but on steroids. The kobolds also enjoy one of the highest fertility rates in all of Eorzea, popping out babies faster than a mentor pops out of an extreme fight in mentor roulettes. They give birth in litters anywhere between 5 and 10 babies which means their population is quite explosive, needing to constantly expand to have a lot of land to create even more smelters for the new kobolds to help in their mining and metallurgy. They also need to find a lot of food to fill an ever increasing number of bellies. But what do these little metal encased mole people eat? Well, they are insectivores eating all manners of grubs and worms. Any invertebrate that burrows through the ground is fair game to the kobolds, with raw and wriggly being their preferred method of consumption. Yummy yummy for my tummy. Slimy, yet satisfying. One of the best delicacies they have are the white earthworms. Finding them is a treasured discovery and near always they are taken and consumed by the kobolds that are in the highest ranks in their society. Perfect segue into talking about that society, kobold culture and their god. To understand kobold culture we must first look at their religion. The kobolds worship Titan, Lord of Crag, which when I first played the game I misheard as Lord of Cracks, which would lead to a very different kind of landslide. This landslide nightmare machine is actually quite different from what we adventurers experience. He is actually very caring, approachable, loving and protective, a father for all the kobolds. For you see, the kobolds believe that in the beginning, the world existed as a relentless, hostile place, very cold and unforgiving. Titan looked upon this world and was displeased. He saw it needed custodians. Thus, 
Titan molded some earth and breathed life into it, creating the race of kobolds. But Titan's children were frail and weak, much like my targets for rescue, and just like those targets, they won't survive the cruelty of this world. Seeing his children's weakness, Titan sent magma to flow from Ogomoro Mountain and had it cool to leave behind rich veins of ore. Here Titan sat down with his children, gave them all some hot cocoa and taught them the ways of mining, metallurgy and smelting. Thus, now armed with weapons and clad in armor, the kobolds were able to claim the lands around Ugomoro as their own. Then Titan went out for a cigarette and never returned, claiming that when his children need him most, he'll come back. Due to the belief that Titan created ore, the kobolds see every bit of it as a blessing from him. It was he who created it for them, and it flows with his life force. Thus, the kobold symbol is that of a stone imbued with life. With Titan's teachings, the kobolds have become an entire society dedicated to metallurgy, mining, and smelting. Let's talk about that, their culture and society. Because of the kobolds' obsession with metallurgy, it has led to them having some of the best metallurgy techniques of any race, having created many unique steels in their pursuits. But these advancements were not for the sake of advancements in technology. This is just a byproduct of their true goal, speaking to and understanding their god, Titan. The same can be said about their other field of expertise, alchemy. Kobold alchemy is done solely in order to enhance the kobolds' mastery of metallurgy and bettering their mining. This has led to them being able to cultivate and breed bombs and even synthetic coblins to help in their mining process. But again, this is a byproduct of their goal to speak with Titan again. Basically, there are a bunch of children who really miss their daddy. As an aside, can we all appreciate how insanely unhinged this kobold is? 789th Order Acolyte Bago. He made explosive toys for children. He is insane, and I absolutely love it. The kobolds live in a patriarchal theocracy, and in this theocracy, there is a social ranking system where each kobold is placed depending on their skills and on their intellect. The harder and better they work, the higher they climb. If they're incredibly intelligent, they'll climb even higher. If they're lazy layabouts or do poor work, they will fall in the ranks. At the tippity tippity top of their ranking system is the patriarch of the first order dig, the priest leader of all kobolds and he who is believed to be the mouthpiece of the great daddy titan. Basically the pope. The patriarchs even get this really neat little titan hat. But how does this ranking system work? Well, each rank is called a dig and is numbered from highest, the first order, through to the current lowest, the 789th order. Each dig has authority and control over all the ranks that come beneath it, meaning the higher a kobold ranks, the more power they have. When a kobold comes of age, they are first placed in a dig based upon their individual capabilities and from there they move either up or down in the ranks depending on how hard they work and how intelligent they are. And throughout their life they will constantly be climbing up and falling down in the ranks depending on their work. Meaning they must constantly be working hard to not lose their position in society. This has led to a society being structured in such a way that the most intelligent and hardworking individuals rule, whereas lazy layabouts, leeches and influencers are pushed down and near exiled. This has also led to the first order dig 
the kobolds that are responsible for government and making decisions for the entire kobold race, being filled with nothing but priests. From here we can actually see a bit of a trend in their ranking. As we go down the kobold ranking, we move from priests to predominantly alchemists and metallurgists, those who are able to work with the stones and or to try and understand the will of Titan. Slightly lower we have mostly mining operation supervisors who organize where they will dig for ore. And at the very bottom of Kobold society and what fills most of the lower ranks is manual laborers, quarrymen, dustmen and the lowest of all, pickmen. The following are all of the Kobold society positions that we know of in the ranking they would generally fall in. However, this does not mean that there are no Pikmin in the higher ranks. A particularly skilled Pikmin can find himself in the middle ranks of Kobold society if he is very hardworking and skilled at finding ore or just corrupt enough and a big enough bully. For example, there is the 59th order Pikmin BZ but even so, he will never be able to climb to the top of the Kobold society. Thinky, thinky parts are very important to the Kobolds. And me break rock good is just not good enough for them. But how do you tell which Kobold is part of which dig? Well, we do that by simply asking them what their name is. Let's go over their naming conventions. Kobold names are incredibly short. They are single syllable sounds with the vowel second, such as ga, ba, yo, bu, zo, and so on. But each kobold is also a part of a clan. Yes, kobolds also have a clan inside their social structures, but it doesn't really mean anything outside of just happening to be their last name. A clan name is also a single syllable sound. Zu, Za, La, Ma, or even ones they use for names such as Ga, Ba, and so on. For example, a kobold named Yo Ma refers to Ma of the Yo clan. This short naming system, along with their very high birth rate and numbers, result in many many kobolds having the exact same name. However, this is not a problem for the kobolds, as near none would introduce themselves as just their name. They would always introduce themselves first by their dig, then their position in the dig, then lastly they will give you their actual names. They're incredibly fixated on status. For example, Yo Ma would instead introduce themselves as 66 Order Executioner Yomar, being the 66 Digs Protector of Younglings. Now, after they've introduced themselves to someone, they will often just use their name and not constantly repeat their dig and position. But, in the instance where there are two kobolds with the exact same name, which apparently isn't too uncommon, they will keep their full title when being referred to in order to prevent confusion. And that's it really. That's what we know about the fuzzy balls known as kobolds. I hope you enjoyed. Next we will board our ship to travel across the indigo deep to the goblin home of... Wait a second. What was that? There's... Something fishy about that boat coming towards me. Oh dear cod, I can see it now. It's another beast tribe. What a fantastic opportunity to segue into talking about the Saragin. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? But for now, goodbye my friends and have a great day. Boom, 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 boom.